Hey everyone, good morning. So, is the new year, it's 2019. Who is still like, I can't believe it's 2019. I um, had a very low key New Year's. I literally got to New Year's and I'm like, I'm partied out, I can't do another party. And so I ended up like just chilling on the couch and watching a Netflix movie. And so since, since the first, I'm literally like, I feel like I miss New Year's. Does that make sense? So I'm like, where's New Year's at? It's, it's January. <laughs> Anyone else feel that way? I was sick for a month. I'm finally better from Disney all the way up until like maybe a week ago, which is crazy. And my husband's like, well, you only went on four trips in a row. And I was like, you know, it's taxing. It's taxing on your body. Okay, so thanks for jumping on. I'm excited that you are here. And I know you have pen and paper to take notes. This is my favorite time of year to like reset, right? Like look at your your past year, your past six months, and really reflect on it. I know that sometimes um, we don't do that. If you're like me, I just like push, 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 go, 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 and I hate to stop and pause and like look at the look at what's behind me. But you have to do that for so many reasons. You have to do it to celebrate moments, and you have to to do it to look back and say, okay, um, there's areas there that I would change going forward, right? So reflection is really, really important. But I love setting goals. Like I said, it's a clean slate. It's an exciting time. I feel that you um, write your year, you know? And the first time I got introduced to really setting goals was 13 years ago when I started to work for Shalene Johnson for her Powder Blue company, which was the certification company for Turbo Kick and Pio and Hustle at the time. And I had never written a goal in my life. I really hadn't read any books about goal setting. Um, so I had absolutely no clue how to do this or that it really works or like who are the kind of people that actually set goals like this. Um, I didn't know any anybody. And I went to audition for her to work for her, like I said, as a presenter. And I have this flyaway here, there it is. And she had to sit down in the classroom, grab a piece of paper and a pen, and she was literally like, okay, I want you to write down 10 crazy, amazing goals that you would love to achieve in the next 12 months and to not overthink it and to just write them down. And so that's what I did. And I, and I wrote them down and I think I have them somewhere and I need to find them. I wrote them down and I didn't think about it again. Okay, so we we folded the 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 paper up, we put it in an envelope, we turned it into the front of the class. This was in 2006, and then I went on with my life. A year later, um, and an envelope came back, self-addressed to me in my own handwriting, and it was like one of those like weird moments where you feel like it's deja vu and you can't quite figure out what it is. And so I open it up, and it's my own handwriting on a piece of notebook paper in a in a using a pink highlighter that I can barely now read because it was a year later, and it was those ten goals. So I hadn't seen them in in twelve months. And I had achieved eight out of the 10 goals. And I remember like reading it and looking at it and sitting on the floor and just literally like, O-M-G. I just achieved eight out of these 10 goals that I totally forgot existed and this works. So I share that with you for so many reasons and that's because when you're first starting this, you don't have to make it complicated. It is so easy. Um, it is like, it's a lot of it is belief and a lot of it is like putting your wishes on paper. And um, I know some people are gonna, you know, the realists are gonna, you know, think I'm the pie in the sky girl, but sometimes I am the pie in the sky girl, but sometimes you just have to put what you want out into the universe, which is all I really did. And then 
I, the other big key thing that was different for me that year was I had surrounded myself with different people. Because a lot of those goals that I achieved in that year, I had achieved more in that one year by writing those goals down than I had in the past 10 years. In one year, I achieved more than in the past 10 years. And it was due to writing it down, having the faith to write it down, and surrounding myself with a new group of people that were where I wanted to go. That's so important because a lot of what holds us back is our environment. And it's not always people, but it's literally our environment. I grew up in a really small town where there was a Kmart and a Burger King. I met my husband on the school bus. And um, we just went back to that town the other day. First time for me in almost 20 years, and unfortunately it was for a funeral for a friend, really dear friend. And my husband and I were driving through the town, and I was just literally like, this is so weird. This is like an out-of-body experience. I feel like just, I don't even know. It was just so crazy how much my life has changed from when we used to live there. But I remember when I used to live there, always just kind of feeling like, you know, kind of just like stuck in a mold, stuck in a box wanting to do something more, but I just didn't know who or where or how, if that was ever going to happen. And it's not always about your environment, but, um, or I shouldn't say it is, it is about your environment, but not necessarily where you live or your home or things like that. Your environment can be many things, right? But I wanna tell you that when you start to admit to yourself what you want and where you want to go that opportunities start to come into your lap and then you have to decide to take them on blind faith because that's what i did you know way back when the moment that i got an opportunity with a job to transfer at that time it was to downers grove um when I was living in like South Chicago Heights area and they offered me a position in a club that this club was like going downhill fast. Nobody wanted it. Nobody would take it. The staff was quitting right and left. Um, you're probably not going to make more money. You're, you're probably not going to make any money. But hey, if you want to go to this club and, and try to and try to save it, and, and, and for me, I was like, I don't care. Get me the H out of here. And I took that opportunity. And I didn't take it to make more money. I didn't take it to, um, to necessarily advance, even though I wanted to advance in my career at that time. I took it because I knew that I wanted to change. I wanted a change. I wanted a challenge. I loved fitness. And I was willing to put in the work to make something happen with my life. And this was like 10 years before working for Shalene. Um, but I was talking to my best friend about this the other day. And that is what literally, that was the step that brought me out of that small town. Had I not taken that position, making no money, you guys, op opening and closing a club, working dog hours, I moved in with my grandparents who lived about halfway to that club. Um, that's when I met Shauna at that club. Um, and that's when I literally pulled myself out of that small town, even though I was living with my grandparents. My grandma is like, the most amazing person on the planet. And she was like, every dollar you make, we're gonna put it into a savings account. And you're gonna, we're gonna save this money and one day you're gonna pay for a wedding with it, or you're gonna pay for a house with it. Um, so she taught me about money. So I'm sharing all this with you because sometimes we feel like we're stuck where we're at. 
And you have to realize that the first part of that is dreaming big or setting goals and recognizing that you want to be somewhere else. And then opportunities will come knocking. And then you have to be the person to say yes or no to those opportunities. I believe we get offered opportunities every single day. I could have easily been like, no, I'm not taking that position. Why in the world would I want to take the club that's falling apart, that has gone through 10 managers in three months? You know, I could have had that attitude and I don't know where my life would be right now if I did. And did I turn the club around? <laughs> I did. It took a long time and then we actually ended up moving the club. Gosh, this is such a crazy story. We were there for a couple years and then we moved the club to another location in Downers Grove and that's where I met Mariella. Isn't that crazy? Like during the grand opening, she, Mariella's like my personal assistant but she's one of my greatest friends. Herman's watching this. Oh my God, Herman and I used to run the first club together. Anyways, um, opportunities. Don't think that oppor you, you're not given opportunities every single day because you are. Are you taking them? Okay. And are you recognizing where you, what you want? So let's get started. So you have a pen right now and you have a piece of paper. Or if you don't, you can go back and watch this later if you're driving or something. And I want you to do just this. Like I want you to right now number it 1 to 10. Okay. And I want you to just start writing down what you would love to achieve in all areas of your life on paper. And I want, I'm going to literally pause and I'm going to let you do that. And I don't want you to overthink it. I don't want you to think how. I just want you to just go, if this would be crazy amazing if this happened this year. And start just go it's really a brain dump okay so i'm going to give you a moment to just to do just that and then i'll give you some tips and we'll dissect it a little bit more so what i'm going through with you right now you guys is about five steps out of ten i don't I couldn't do them all on a live here today. It would take too long. So I have created a masterclass on setting and crushing goals um, that will be available tomorrow. So if that's something that you're interested in, it'll be up on my website. Um, but you can just drop an emoji or you can write masterclass in the comments. And as soon as it's up and available, I'll send you the link. Um, so it'll be like for those that want to dive deeper into this, it'll really be the how to, okay? So anytime during the live, you can do that. Okay, so these are the different categories. So I already wrote my goals out for 2019 and I, I did it literally like a day or two ago. And this is the first part. It's just on notebook paper and it's, you know. Um, so these are the categories you want to make sure are all included okay so do you have health and fitness goals out there and you want to think about writing your goals as if you've already achieved them so if it were a weight loss goal you know I um, I have lost the 10 pounds and I you know I'm pre I'm post baby weight so you're writing the goals as if you've already achieved them, okay? And it doesn't have to be weight loss. It can be um, my core is stronger than it's ever been or, you know, I don't have back pain anymore or, you know, whatever whatever that may be, okay? So health and fitness goals, um, faith, okay? That's something that's important to you. Uh, family, family goals. You really can't set goals for other people Okay, unless it's your kids, right? Because you're, if you have little kids, right, you're, you are in control of that. But it could more so be like, as a family, I would like to spend quality time, like more, more time with my family, more time with my kids. It could also be like traveling together. It could be doing activities together, vacations, um, things like that. 
okay? Um, fun, fun is important. If it's not fun, I don't wanna do it. <laughs> I still need a shirt that says that. So fun, like maybe it's hobbies, maybe it's like taking on a new hobby. Um, as an instructor, like I go through instructor burnout all the time. There's times where I'm like, oh, I'm just like, I don't wanna teach anymore. And then there's times where like, I'm like, I should open a studio. And then Jason goes, you can't open a studio. And I'm like, okay, so maybe I should do some pop-up workout classes. And maybe I should host some workouts in my studio downstairs. Maybe I should start teaching Turbo Cake virtually. Like, I don't know. So here we go, right? Like all these ideas come in. What makes you happy? What is fun for you? Um, for me, that's traveling. That's vacation. That's Disney World. That's, you know, that those are things that make me happy, okay? Finances, it, this is a huge one, right? So we're talking about debt, oh my gosh. We're talking about debt. I feel like I could do a whole other live about debt. Um, I've paid off $30,000 in credit card debt. Um, it drives me absolutely nuts every time I go anywhere and pay for anything and they try to sell you a credit card and I tell them, you know what? No, thanks. Absolutely not. I'm completely debt free. And they look at me like I'm crazy, you know, and it's like, you have to be really disciplined and work really hard to, and I have paid off credit card debts probably three times in my life. How many of you have paid off a credit card or more? two credit cards, three credit cards, and, and the slate is completely clean, and then somehow you get sucked back into those damn credit cards, right? Or a car payment or whatever it is. But they'll look at me like I'm absolutely nuts, like I'm out of my mind. Um, so finances, um, but it could also be um, income that you want to earn. So if you have a business outside of your job and you want to make X amount in your business and then you're going to take that income and what are you going to do with it? So like that's my passion. Besides doing what I love, I love teaching people that that's really what success is all about. You have to decide why you're building a business and what you're going to do with that income how is it going to benefit your family because if it if it's not going to benefit your family right because nobody can motivate you and and nothing will motivate you more than taking care of the people that you love so X amount if you want to make X amount in your business um, or X amount more uh, maybe you don't have a business. Maybe you just have a nine to five and you would love to pay off a credit card or two credit cards or start a savings fund or plan for Disney World and pay for cash for it by the end of the year. Or we just came out of Christmas and how much did we spend on Christmas? You know, do we want to be in that same place next year? Set goals that ultimately are going to not only make you happier, but they're going to relieve stress on you. Okay, career, do you love what you do? Would you do it for free? Would you love to be doing something else? You know, like just be honest with yourself. Would you love to switch careers? What's holding you back? Um, those are goals. Don't worry about the how. You have to just be honest with yourself first and, and decide that you're worthy. I'm worthy to do something else and love it and be happy and make money doing it. You have to, to, to own that within yourself first before opportunities are ever gonna be presented to you, okay? Um, and the last thing is just, um, you might have self-care on there too. Um, I kind of decided self-care was gonna be like the, the, my, my focus the beginning of last year. We're going to talk about focus next, but mentally, it's my personal area that I always just shove to the back. You know, um, fitness is always on there, career is always on there, finances are always on there, traveling, family, like that's my jam. And then the self care, like I said, I never put the focus on it. And if you followed me last year when I did this, 
uh, live training last year, I said that. I said I'm putting my focus at least, you know, the first quarter of the year on self-care and acknowledging all the doctor appointments and all the things that I know I need to do and I never do them. And I wrote them all down and I'm writing down I want to throw up because I don't want to do any of it. Like I don't want to do any of it. But I literally was just like, I'm going to make myself do it and I'm going to Put that as my focus. The reason that I'm sharing that with you is because it was kind of always in the back of my mind for years and years, right? But until I just decided and I wrote it down and I made it my focus, then all of a sudden all these things just started to happen. And one being I found out that I had the diastasis recti and I found that out in April, had the surgery in June recovered all the way through September and I'm just now you guys starting to feel normal again and it's crazy um I don't know if all that would have happened I I've had it since I've had Skylar and I didn't know I had it and that surgery changed me like it changed me as a person um, I will never take my health and fitness for granted again I was in a walker for two and a half weeks. I was in bed for like a month. Um, it was definitely the hardest thing I've ever gone through. And so you see how that happens? Like, I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's a coincidence, okay? And so I, I was literally forced to do the surgery. Well, I wasn't forced because it was like completely elective and I had to pay the whole thing out of pocket and that's a whole other video. But I just decided like I'm going to do this and I'm going to pause everything. I'm going to pause Summit. I'm going to pause my business. I'm going to pause my fitness. I'm going to pause everything and take care of me. And to you, that might seem like common sense, but I never do that. I never stop. I never slow down. So for me, it was huge. And then I knew what was going to happen. It kind of put me into a mild depression because fitness is like my, my therapy. It's my drug. And when I couldn't do that, you know, ew, I didn't want to go there. But I made it through it. And uh, I needed to do it. And I'm so glad that I did it. And I'm so glad that it's over with. And, you know, it's kind of been like my whole message of 2018 and um, helping other women through that as well. But um, my point is, is when you decide and you put it on paper and you put it out there and you mentally accept that this is what I want, where I want to go, and things start to just happen. Okay. Hey, Lindsay. Okay. So if you have questions, um, throw them up on the live. Again, I'll be doing a full mm -hmm. masterclass. It'll be, um, it's already recorded. Um, it'll be available tomorrow. So I dive deeper into all of this. So if you are interested in that, just write masterclass on the live or, or do an emoji, you can always message me. Okay, so you wrote your goals down. You wrote them in all areas of your life and you wrote them as if you've already achieved them, okay? I want you to post your goals where you can see them every single day, whether that's a post-it note on your computer or on your mirror where you're getting ready every single morning or in your car, but in a place where you can see them every single day. Now, as I shared with you, I didn't see them every single day. Like I literally put them on paper and gave them to Shalene and a year later, they came back to me. So if this is the very, you know, these are my favorite earrings and I think it's the second or third pair I have bought because they constantly just fall out. They're Kate Spade. I don't understand why they just fall out. Um, and then, like I caught it today, but sometimes they just fall out and then I lose them. Um, if this is the first time you're doing something like this and maybe you're a little overwhelmed, I would say stop here. Just write your goals on paper, put them in a place where you can see them, okay? And, and let that be enough, okay? But if you've done this before or you're like, this is awesome and I get it and I'm totally with you and you're, you're on my wavelength and, and this is getting you excited and, and getting you pumped up, then like these would be the next steps, okay? So I believe that what you think about 
most of the time becomes your life. What you think about most of the time becomes your life. And um, that comes from The Secret, which is the law of attraction. That's a book. Um, I know people either love it or hate it, but I love it, believe in it. Um, but it's also, you can't just wish things to happen. You can't just go, you know, oh, I wish I could just have all my $30,000 of debt just completely gone and I'll just sit here and wait for it to happen. Well, of course, it doesn't work like that. But what you don't realize is that what you wrote down on paper is what you believe you can achieve. So you didn't write things down that are bigger than what you actually believe can happen. And that is a part of growth. That is a part of personal growth. So like I said, when I first started this 13 years ago, some of the goals that were on were on there, I know was like getting, um, becoming an A certified group fitness instructor. That was one of them. Um, becoming a five star presenter for Shalene's team. Now I hadn't even um, received the job yet when I wrote that goal down. Becoming an A certified instructor was something I wanted to do for 10 years, but I never just freaking did it. Do you know what I mean? Well, becoming a part of her team, it was a requirement and you had to do it. And then as far as becoming like one of her top presenters, I hadn't even had the job yet, but I thought if I'm going to go work for her, I want to be on her A-list. But did I know how to do it? No. But in my mind, I thought that would be awesome. That would be cool. Okay, so the goals I was writing down was literally in my life at that time, what I thought I could achieve, but it was also like this would be crazy awesome, but not worrying about the how. But then as years went by and my confidence grew and every year I was like, uh, I started achieving the yearly goals in six months and then I started achieving the yearly goals in three months and then having to write new ones and new ones. And so everything that I have achieved like in the in the past 13 years has been written down as a goal first. But every year those goals change based on my personal skill level, my personal confidence level, and who I choose to surround myself with is everything. It's everything, okay? So, um, those goals turned into, I would love to have my own business one day. I would love to, um, I have quit my, my full-time job in the clubs that I was there for also 13 years. Isn't that weird? The whole 13 years thing. Um, but I didn't know what I was going to do and I didn't know how I was going to make that happen. And then it was, you know, I'll pay off, uh, $5,000 in credit card debt. Um, it was, build our dream home. It was become a mom before the age of 35. And do you know how old I was when I got pregnant with Brooklyn? You just guessed it. I literally got pregnant with her in um, the end of June, literally right before I turned 35. Um, ironic? No. It was on my goal list that year. And did I go home and tell my husband, like, we're trying to have a baby? No. Like it literally just like happened. <laughs> um, but as you grow as a person, then your goals change. Do you know what was on my goal list this year or 2018? It was like a bucket list goal. It was to take my top leaders on a beach house epic retreat. I didn't know what that was going to look like, where it was going to be, how much it was going to cost, how I was going to plan it all. And I had the surgery and everything. Um, but that that's what life's all about. Like freaking go for it. Go for what you want out of life because things aren't going to just happen to you. You have to make them happen. Um, Every goal uh, personally with, with Brooklyn, 
to um, fitness, to um, building my business and ranks and, and everything has gone on on paper first. Okay, so um, who you surround yourself with is critical. You are the product of the top five people you hang out with the most. And that is scary. That's scary, right? So when you think about like, you know, the top five people might be like, you know, family, best friend, spouse, your manager, your, your boss, um, like who are who is that core of people? And this is like hardcore truth. You take those people and you look at like their their positive attitude on life, their fitness level, their health, their priorities, um, their income levels, all of those things, and you're a product of those top five people. And that is so so true because when I used to work in the clubs, it was a very toxic environment. Um, the people that I worked for, it was extremely toxic and negative. And I was surrounded by, by people who didn't work out and who didn't care about their health and who were constantly in debt and who were constantly like just trying to catch up and get ahead. And well, guess what happens? Like you fall into that trap. Um, you are that the product of those people. So how do you get out? How do you get ahead, right? Um, while well, you're looking at her right here, right, you have to start surrounding yourself with people that have already achieved what you want to achieve. And Shalene has been one of my mentors. I fell in love with her because of Turbo Kick initially, but the moment I met her face to face in person, I fell in love with her soul. I fell in love with this woman that loved fitness and, and fun, but even more, she had her head screwed on straight. She had a happy marriage. You know, she was present with her kids every single day. And she was building a business that she loved, but around her priorities. Does that make sense? And I knew that this was a person I needed to literally like leech onto. And of course, I can't leech on to Shalene. But what I mean by that is pay attention. What is What books does she read? Because I need to go read those. What events does she go to? Because I need to go to those events. You know, what does she do in her spare time? Because that's what I need to be doing. Literally, it's like when you work out with a personal trainer. Don't you always want to know like what the personal trainer eats and what they do for their workout? Because you admire them and you want the same thing so just then you want to just model that well life and goals and and finances and everything is the same exact thing okay um so the last last thing is where do you start like where do you focus so like i said last year i made my focus for first quarter um, for me, self-care. And then I go through this in the master class because we would be here all day. But in the master class, I basically teach you how to take one of these goals and make it your focus goal for 90 days, okay? And dissect it to figure out how do I actually make that goal come to life? How do I make it happen? And it's one, it, it's the goal that you just know. Like you're, lo you're looking at these goals right now and you're like, I need to get this under effing control. Or this needs to happen right now because of X, Y, and Z, whatever, right? You guys, um, thank you so much for the support yesterday with Brooklyn's post. Um, I shared this much of it, you know, like, that's a whole other life, but um, she's a part of my goals. And everything that we do for her, there has been seasons of focus to just figure everything out that I need to figure out to help Brooklyn, to help give her the best shot, because there is, is no one else that can do that. Doctors can't do that. They can't. And so, um, if you want things to happen, um, there's a book that will teach you 
how to make it happen. There's always a book. And every morning, that's what I do. I listen to books and I listen to podcasts. And if I don't do that, then I'm literally spinning like this. I don't know. What, to, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. <clears throat> so picking a focus goal of what you know in your gut, like I need to focus on this right now. And um, every year, mine's completely different. Sometimes it, you know, it has been Brooklyn. It has been completely organizing my life. I built a huge business from unemployment to a seven figure business really fast. I built it in about a two and a half year period of time by going balls to the wall. And I literally had to at some point and then had two kids and then I literally had to go, holy crap, I need to stop and freaking organize my life. And that's what I did. Okay. And so, and then sometimes my focus has been my gut health and my IBS. And sometimes it's my fitness, you know, when I had to lose 50 pounds two times. And a lot of times, many times, it's to build my business, right? Because for me, I can't do all of these things, like all the holistic care and everything that we're doing for our kids without that. Okay, so you kind of have to decide, like, what does my focus need to be? And then we dissect it on paper to figure out how, what do I need to do every single day to make this happen? Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. Again, if you're just starting out, this is the first time you're really putting goals on paper, this might be enough. Just write the 10 out, put it in a place where you can see it every single day, read The Secret, read Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Those are great places to start, and there's audio, so you can listen to them in your car, on your phone, and on a podcast, and start hanging out with people who live the life that you aspire to you know, and, and start to pick up those habits and, and recognize like what skills, what skills do I need to acquire to hit that goal? And if you want to dive deeper and you want to learn more and um, you would like to do that with me, um, I already recorded a masterclass called Setting and Crushing Goals. It'll be available tomorrow. Um, you can comment below this live with an emoji or you can just write masterclass and I will come back and give you the info on that as soon as it's available. Um, but that's it. Happy New Year. Good luck. Um, let me know how you like this or if you want to share one goal off of your top 10 that you aim to crush this year, whatever that may be, I would, um, I would love to, I would love for you to put that out in the universe. And again, I can almost guarantee that if you do, opportunities are going to come knocking and you need to have your eyes open and you need to be ready to say yes when it's uncomfortable and it's scary and you just need to do it. You just need to do it anyways, right? All right, you guys. Cheers. Thanks.